why would I worry? You never show up late and you don't make mistakes. I'm not in a hurry. No, I'm walking at your pace cause you showed a better way. In the night, I won't be afraid. You by my side so I know I'm okay. So I will sing at the top of my Welcome to the Story Lab. This week we're talking about integrity while we take a look at what's on the inside. Candle? Oh. Ugh. Blah. Miss some. Ugh. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about integrity. Which is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. Um, what's up with the costume? Oh, we're putting on this fall festival for the little kids in my neighborhood. And I've stayed up late the last three nights researching the best costume. You're really into this, aren't you? It's all I can think about. So, what are you? You can't tell what I am. Uh, nuclear physicist? Uh, uh computer repair guy? No. <sighs> oh, you're a smarty pants. I'm a natural, right? All right, Mr. Smarty Pants. Do you have something for us to do today? Of course. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to remove the windshield washer fluid from these beakers. Okay. Whoa, 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 where are you going? To dump this in the sink. No, 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 way too simple. Then tell me what method we can use, smarty pants. We shall employ the principle of displacement. You really like to complicate things, don't you? Indeed I do. Let's make it. So is this our stuff? Yeah, it's all right here. We're gonna see who can displace the most washer fluid in their beaker with the fewest candies, but you get to choose which one. Hmm, let's see. Well, the pumpkins are a little heavier, I can't really tell, but the Tootsie Rolls have the fluffy ends. I choose the pumpkins. Excellent. Ready? You're on. Let's Tootsie Roll. Okay, obviously you were done faster than mine. Right, okay. How many pumpkins did you have to use? 183. Oh, How about good. you? Pretty good. I only had to do 130. 
19, Tootsie Roll called Dominion over displacement. Displacement occurs when an object enters liquid, pushing out the liquid to make room for itself. The object pushes out a volume of liquid equal to its own volume. Good in, bad out. Speaking of which, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today we're in the book of Philippians. Philippians is one of 21 letters in the New Testament. The leaders of the early church wanted to teach Jesus followers what was true, and they often wrote letters to do that. The Apostle Paul sent one of these letters to the believers in the church at Philippi. Paul had spent several months in Philippi as the new church grew in the home of a woman named Lydia. But around 10 years later, Paul was arrested while Paul was in prison, the church in Philippi sent a messenger with encouragement and financial help. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. Paul had been arrested and sent to Rome to stand trial before Caesar. But for two years, while he waited, Paul was able to continue teaching about Jesus even though he was chained to a guard the whole time. Now, during this time, Paul wrote many letters to the new churches he had helped to start. Often, he wanted to correct false teaching or to help solve a crisis in the church. But the Philippian church was a different story. Not only were the new believers growing in their love for Jesus and each other, but they even sent help to Paul in prison. Paul's response to them overflows with joy. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for you, I always pray with joy. Toward the end of the letter, Paul reminded the believers how to keep growing in their peace and joy in Jesus. Finally, my brothers and sisters, always think about what is true. Think about what is noble, right, and pure. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. If anything is excellent or worthy of praise, think about those kinds of things. Wow, <laughs> Paul packs so much into that one single verse. You might think about it like a, like a healthy diet. Your doctor or a teacher can tell you what you need to eat for your body to stay healthy and active, veggies, fruits, grains, and protein. But Paul was telling the Philippians that there's a healthy diet for their minds. We're supposed to take in and think about things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, and worthy of respect, excellent, or worthy of praise. Sounds simple, right? Uh, you know, just control your thoughts. But it's not as easy as that, so let's give it a try. Okay. Do not think about the world's cutest baby elephant. Don't do it! I said, uh, stop that! Okay, so did you manage not to think about a ridiculously adorable baby elephant? Huh, yeah, me neither. After all, it was right there in our faces. See, that's how our brains work. What we put into our minds most often is what we end up thinking about. Every day, our brains are bombarded with images and ideas, YouTube ads, news about terrible things happening in the world, that weird sandwich mom put in your lunch, that kid who gave you a funny look on the bus. Before you know it, you're mired in a stew of anxious thoughts and irritations, and you feel awful without any idea why. Paul knew all about that. He knew that God designed our minds for a healthy diet of good thoughts. But it will not happen by accident. You have to choose every single day what you put into your mind. Paul outlines the mind diet like this. We should all think about things that are, first of all, true. Now, it's true that this broken world is full of hard things. But the bigger, greater truth is that God made you. God knew you and loved you before the world even began. God will always forgive when you ask and will always be with you. And God can work out even the most difficult things for good for those who follow Jesus. Okay, next up in our mind diet, think about things that are noble, right, and pure. It's not always easy to do the right thing, but it sure helps when you choose to be around people who make good choices. You can also pay attention to the stories of people in scripture, in history, and even now, who live in a way that honors God and shows love to the people around them. This doesn't mean you have to pretend nothing's wrong in the world or even in your life, but you can choose to put your focus on what's right instead of what's wrong. Let's check out what else to put in our brains. 
Think about things that are lovely and worthy of respect. Now, something that's lovely is delightful. It might be grand, like a mountain view, or simple, like a bird hopping across your path. Lovely might be a smile from a friend, or a really funny joke that makes you LOL for reals. Lovely might be an awesome movie or a really cool song. Now, the final piece of our mind puzzle, think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Excellence shows up when you take the gifts that God has given you and pour your heart into using them well. And you can keep your eyes out for people who are doing just that. A friend who can play beautiful music on the piano. A kid you know who has worked super hard to do the perfect cartwheel. Your teacher who manages to make each kid in the class feel loved. Paul wrote all this down for the Philippians nearly 2,000 years ago. But today, science has shown just how true it is. We often believe that how we feel is just out of our control. It's just what happens to us. But scientific studies show that almost half of feeling happy and peaceful depends on your thoughts. That should be a huge encouragement. You can change how you feel by changing your thoughts. Paul goes on to add that when we do that, the God who gives peace will be with you. Yeah, it takes practice, but choosing what to put on our minds is the key to becoming more like Jesus as we grow in loving God and loving others. The end. Okay, my brain is spinning. Copy that. Yeah, it's a lot to take in. So, what's our part in the story? Well, you can't change what you're thinking until you actually know what's going on in your head. So the first step is to just pay attention to your thoughts. Especially if you're feeling anxious or frustrated. Ask yourself, what have I been thinking about? Is it true? And even if it's true, is it something that's helpful to focus on? Like trying to guess what someone's thinking about you, or stressing over a test that's not until next week. Yep, then once you've spotted an unhelpful thought, it's time to replace it. It's always good to start with the truth of who God is and how much God loves you. Then look for new things to focus on, like your cute baby brother, or an awesome book you're reading, or how you played so hard in your first soccer match even though you were nervous. Yep, it's also super important to pay attention to the things you're watching and listening to. Yeah, like movies and music, and YouTube channels, and books, and video games. They all affect what you're thinking about and how you see the world. So, think positive. Well, yes, but this is about way more than just trying to think good thoughts. When you follow Jesus, God sends the Holy Spirit to help guide you. We need power from God's Spirit to be able to change what's going on inside our heads. Now, that's a thought I can get behind. Me too. You got it. See you next time. So. Here's the thing, focus on what's true. By filling your mind with really good stuff. I don't think those are actually very good for your brain and definitely not for your body. All things in moderation. Ugh, I missed it. Thanks for joining us in the story lab. See you next time. Here, let me try. That was amazing. Oh, you got it.